Security expert and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the Obama administration, Joel Rubin. Joel, it's always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Natasha. It's great to be with you. So this ruling from the high court in Israel means upwards of 63,000 ultra-Orthodox men currently in the middle of religious studies could potentially be drafted. How is this likely to, to shake up the apple cart here? Boy, this is a significant ruling that uh, we just saw from the Supreme Court in Israel. And it's a, it was a unanimous ruling, by the way. Uh, the ultra-Orthodox in Israel have been exempted from military service, as you mentioned, since the founding of the state of Israel as part of an arrangement that was made. Uh, the thinking back in 1948 was that there wouldn't be very many ultra-Orthodox down the road. Well, it turns out the opposite has occurred. And now there are large numbers of ultra-Orthodox men who, instead of going to the draft, they study. They study the Torah. They study Jewish texts. And they claim that that is their service. But now, in the midst of this long war in Gaza, eight months uh, and, and ongoing, the longest war in the state of Israel's history since 1948, uh, they need to, frankly, have uh, more people signing up to the military. And so this this is going to really rock Prime Minister Netanyahu's coalition, who explicitly wants to avoid this kind of dynamic from unfolding. Yeah, tell me more about that. How does this present an issue for Netanyahu specifically? Well, he has, Natasha, a lot of religious parties in his coalition who signed up to be members of this coalition in order to uh, get benefits to their community one of which is to not be drafted. And uh, we saw a couple of weeks ago when the, the de former defense minister, Benny Gantz, left the coalition government, he actually referred in a, a bit to this, this tension that he wanted religious members, parties who were represented in the government to have their constituents be part of the Israeli defense forces. Got a lot of pushback from the prime minister. He left. Now the courts have made a decision. And the question is, is, will these religious parties leave the prime minister's government? And if so, collapse the government? Or will they try to get some kind of a, a deal, a legislative deal, that they can push through the Israeli Knesset? They do have the majority. Uh, so that still is a possibility. But broad majorities of Israel's public support drafting the religious uh, into the military. Okay. And Joel, what are the chances this ruling actually goes into effect and, and then that those impacted will actually show up and willingly serve? Well, right now it's in effect. Uh, right now it is underway. And this means that Netanyahu and his team, they have to come up with a legislative fix quickly and pass it quickly. And that doesn't happen. It's like in our system as well. Uh, quickly is not really how uh, the Israeli parliament works, in particular in something as contentious as this, where there are members of the coalition who do want to see this draft go forward, uh, very right-wing members who are secular, who want to see the, the, the religious in. So uh, we could see a real crack-up in his coalition. That said, even if there are new elections, this issue is still going to be part of a future negotiation over a formation of an Israeli government. So uh, we're entering, if I may add, uh, the period of instability on domestic politics in Israel that we saw uh, last year before the October 7th uh, strike by Hamas, where there were riot, ri riots and protests, primarily, the, I should say, protests in the streets to try to protect the Supreme Court for just this reason, because of the, the tension between secular Israelis and religious Israelis. Instability there. All right, Joel Rubin, always appreciate the context and time. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Tasha. We are now just two.